Hello, welcome to part three of building a CMDB integration. My name is Nick Ryan, and today we're actually going to start the actual building of this integration. So hopefully you were able to get through what was outlined in part two and come up with the data modeling and mapping uh, from the source system that you're trying to integrate with into the CMDB data model. So when we get started, you're going to need to make sure that your instance has a few applications and plugins uh, enabled in it. First will be Integration Commons. You're going to need the Integration Hub ETL. You're going to need in the data stream actions uh, that come with the Integration Hub. So the data stream one uh, you may or may not use, but it's good to have it make sure that it's enabled. And you're going to need App Engine Studio. Uh, this is what's going to be actually the first step that we're going to do today uh, is using App Engine Studio. So this slide is really representing what we're going to capture in our application or our integration. And we're going to start with creating a scoped application in the App Engine Studio. Uh, and that's going to capture a number of these components. So we're going to start down here with uh, defining some integration hub actions. Uh, those are going to feed into our data source, and those data sources are then going to feed into our integration hub ETL definitions where we do some of the transformations, the mapping, set up relationships, and so on. So we want to capture all of these things uh, in a scoped application you can do this in an update set if you want, uh, to be sure. Uh, I prefer doing it in a scoped app, so that's the way we're going to go about doing it. And the reason for that is uh, the portability and the and the ability to actually commit changes into um, a source control system like GitHub. So here we go. There's a couple steps that we're going to do today, so this is going to be pretty quick. Uh, in terms of just creating the scoped app. And then the, the first thing we're gonna need to do before we get started on actually building some of the data sources and ETL components is to come up with a discovery source specific to this integration. The scoped app is gonna be created within App Engine Studio. Uh, the IDE that we'll actually start that process with isn't very conducive to um, defining the rest of the components. So we're not going to really work within that IDE, but we'll go there initially to create the scoped app. And when it comes to your discovery source, you will you might notice a number of the service graph connectors start with SG dash, you know, the name of the technology, um, SG AWS or something like that, um, because this is just a potentially a so, uh, an integration that you're building for your own company, you might start with the prefix of your company name followed by the technology. We're not going to go through this table structure here, but it is important to note, and there may be a, a bonus video uh, to come later that covers some of these advanced uh, features. But there, it, when you install the integration commons application, there is a series of tables that become available. And these are actually used by service graph connectors to define, uh, to basically facilitate multiple instances of the connection. So in, in our case, where we're working with a Kong API gateway, maybe I've got two or three or four gateways in my company, and I need to have different integrations to each of them. Well, unless we adopt some of these concepts to to use these tables, it's really difficult to connect to more than one. Uh, and some of that we'll see as we start to get into um, creating the integration hub actions and the data sources. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into our instance. So this CMDB integrations dashboard doesn't have anything in it. There's no applications here. And so when we're done, well, this will actually start populating um, with things after we've completed our integration, and we'll be able to see it show up here. But to start out, 
let's go to actually we can just look for studio in here if, if you've enabled this and it's active on on your instance you should be able to open the app engine studio so there's a couple things you can do once you're into the app engine studio you can import so if you've already created an app and you've saved it in a in like github or some source repository that we support you can import that into this instance through this mechanism but we're starting from scratch so let's go ahead and create our app i'm going to call this now song gateway and you i'm going to leave these roles uh, as the defaults you can set up specific user or user roles as part of your scoped app if you want to take the defaults here it won't take too long and then this is the ide that i mentioned briefly that we're really not going to stay working within here all at this point we've created our scoped app and that's really the container in which we want to to begin working uh, i'm not going to set up the source control now but what you can do if you want at this point you can link it uh, if you go create a repository uh, in your github account you can specify that here these branches then you know some folks say to uh, just use the default here but you might also want to use more commonly known mechanisms like or naming conventions like you create a master branch for this the credential is really can be confusing but um, i've found that the what works with github at least is to create a basic auth credential type uh, the username will be what you log into your github account with or your email address for it and then you have to go create a, a developer token. And then so you put that in as the password uh, being the developer token. And then click the link to source control and you should have it set up there so that after you know the day's worth of work, you can come back in here and, and commit your changes to source control. But as I said, we're not gonna work in this IDE, so I'm gonna go back into this regular view and if I refresh uh, this page this little the icon up here that looks like a, a globe of sorts is going to represent the scope that we're working within and so now you see that it's actually red and it's saying if you hover over it it's telling us now we're working in, in that now Kong GW application scope so this is where you want to make sure that your um, capturing things within that scope so that they're automatically saved for you in in, um, in this application container. So we've done the first part. We've created that uh, scoped app. And so the, the next part that we want to do is go and register our discovery source. And so to do that, there's two things. One is we really are going to want to um, have this be portable. So we're probably going to create this application in like a dev environment right? and then maybe move it to test and then eventually production. And so we don't want to have to come in and create this discovery source every time manually. So what we can do is use a fixed script. And if you're not familiar with fixed scripts, what they do is like each time an application is installed, that fixed script will run. Uh, just the first time that it's installed. So very useful for something like this, where we want it to run and register uh, our discovery source. So I'll click new here. You see again, the application scope um, is not global. It's our uh, now Kong GW discovery source, which is what we want. And so here I'm just gonna say add discovery source for Kong Gateway integration. Maybe the name's not long enough. <clears throat> and so there's some utilities uh, that 
are also in the integration commons um, application that come with this. So I'm going to say my source name is going to be now dash Kong GW. It doesn't have to match your application name, but that just happens to be what I'm going to use. And then we can uh, leverage this CMDB data source util and add this data source. Now, if you're a partner and you're creating a service graph connector that will be officially certified in the service graph connector uh, program, you're going to want to also include these two lines, which add it to the licensing uh, calculations as well for something like ITOM licensing. Uh, but if you're just your own organization, you won't want to do that because uh, you do, don't get the dinged in terms of licensing for your own integrations that you create. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So here's our first thing that we've added into our scoped application. Now at this point, this actually hasn't run. So we can come in here and see I've conveniently saved a, a quick link to the discovery sources, but these are all the out of the box discovery sources. And we can see that at this point, we don't have our Kong or now dash Kong gateway in here. So to do this, we can actually go to background scripts and run that same little piece of code here. Might get some strange errors initially, but um, we'll check and see if it actually got updated. So it goes ahead and says, it created some uh, cross scope privileges and that's effectively done automatically in this case because we um, we're in as an admin here. So let's go back to our discovery choices and sure enough here now is our discovery choice. So in the next, well, probably not the next session, but the last section, section five, when we start to define our ETLs, uh, this will be one of the first things that we have to define. And so that's going to be it for today. In our next section, we're actually going to dig in and do a lot more in terms of interacting with our source system. So until then, uh, I hope you're able to get your app set up and your discovery source defined. Thank you.